In nature, there is a great number of different types of nuclear reactions that can readily take place. And each one of those nuclear reactions takes place with its own probability or likelihood. Now, in nuclear physics, we define the probability of a nuclear reaction taking place using something called the cross-section of our nucleus. Now, if we imagine that our nucleus is a solid sphere, then and the cross-section of our nucleus basically represents the actual cross-sectional area of our nucleus. Now, of course, we know that this is not true. A nucleus doesn't actually have a well-defined cross-sectional area, and that's because the nucleons, the protons and neutrons, do not always act as particles. They can also act as waves. Now, although the edges of any nucleus is not not very well defined or not very well defined, we can nonetheless define the cross section of our nucleus in a similar way as we would define it for solid spheres. So basically, in order for a nuclear reaction to actually take place, a collision between a particle and the nucleus of our atom must take place. Now if we increase the entire size of the nucleus, we increase the cross-section of that nucleus and so we increase the likelihood that the nuclear reaction and the collision will actually take place. So cross-section depends on the type of atom that we are dealing with. Basically, the larger the atom, the greater the cross-section. Now, during a nuclear reaction, a particle usually collides with the nucleus and the cross-section of that nucleus serves as the effective target area for our collision and for our nuclear reaction. So let's suppose we have a bunch of particles shown here that are traveling along the x-axis as shown in the positive direction. Now let's imagine that we take a certain region, a certain slab with an area A and a width given by D that contains a certain number of nuclei shown in purple. Now let's suppose that we have n number of nuclei per unit volume within this region. That is the density of our nuclei. Now we know that only when a collision between the particles and the nucleus takes place will a nuclear reaction take place. If the particles basically hit this empty region, they will continue undeflected and no nuclear reaction will actually take place. So we see that what actually determines the rate of our nuclear reaction, the probability of the nuclear reaction is the cross-section area, the cross-sectional area of all these nuclei within this certain region. So let's denote A1 to represent the cross-sectional area of all the nuclei found within this slab that has a density of N. So basically we have n number of nuclei per unit volume and let's designate sigma to be the cross section of our nucleus. So basically each one of these nuclei has a nuclear cross section given by sigma. Now, now that we define these quantities, we can solve for A1 mathematically. So to calculate A1, we can basically multiply the density N by the entire volume of this region, A multiplied by D. We see that our density simply becomes N the number of nuclei. And if we multiply N by sigma, that gives us our entire cross-sectional area of all the nuclei found within this region. So once again, N represents the nuclei per volume. And since A times D is the volume, the volumes cancel from top and bottom and we are simply left with the number of nuclei multiplied by the cross-section of each one of those nuclei and that gives us the cross-section of the entire region that contains all these nuclei. <coughs> 
So once again, A1 represents the total cross-sectional area of all the nuclei within this region, within the slab. So we see that if A, if this area is much greater than A1, meaning this entire region consists mostly of empty space, then very little collisions will actually occur and most particles will basically pass through the empty space undeflected. However, if A is approximately equal to A1, then we have a very high concentration of nuclei and so our collisions will readily take place with high probability and so nuclear reactions will take place. Now, how exactly can we define what our sigma is? So let's designate R0 to be the number of particles that actually collide with this entire region, that actually strike this region shown here. So R0 is the number of particles that strike the slab every single second. Then if we take R0 and we multiply it by the ratio of A1 to A, that will give us the likelihood or the rate with which our collisions actually take place with those nuclei. So R is equal to R0 multiplied by the ratio of A1 to A, where A1 is the total cross-sectional area of the nuclei, it's the target area when our collisions actually take place and that nuclear reaction takes place divided by A which is the area of this entire region. So R is the number of collisions that actually take place with the nuclei that creates that nuclear reaction. Now A1 can be replaced with this entire quantity. So N multiplied by A times D times sigma. Now A's appear on top and bottom, we can cancel the A's and we see that R is equal to R0 times N times D times sigma. Now we can rearrange and solve for sigma and we see that sigma is given by R divided by R0 times N times D. Now this denominator can be replaced with I, where I is the product of these three quantities. And we see that sigma is given by R divided by I, where R is the number of nuclear reactions every single second. It's the number of collisions between the particles and the nuclei and I is the number of collisions between the particles and the slab per unit time per unit area. So we see that sigma has units of meters squared and in a way we can think of sigma as being the cross-sectional area of our nucleus if we imagine the nucleus to be a solid sphere. So the greater our sigma is the more likely that that our particle will actually collide with that nucleus of the atom and force that nuclear reaction to actually take place. Now often the cross-section of our nucleus is simply known as the nuclear cross-section.